All right, hey guys, my name is Tim Malcolm from 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days and also several seasons of 90 Day Fiance Pillow Talk and over the course of two days I ask you guys, people that follow my Instagram, to ask questions related to the show, related to my business, related to my previous relationships, and you guys were awesome. I ended up getting over 250 questions uh, through the Instagram story and also the Instagram posts, and now I am deciding to put it all on video, which uh, is going to be on me and my best friend Darius's YouTube channel. So uh, you may be seeing a preview of this on Instagram, but to see the full video, you need to go over to the Tim Malcolm YouTube channel. Thank you so much in advance for your support. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if I missed anything in this, don't worry. Uh, this is going to be a three to four part episode, depending on how long the video is. So make sure you check out all the additional videos to come. And if we don't answer your questions, send me a message because I'm sure in the future we will do another one. Darius, uh, my best friend, is behind the camera. He's going to be asking the questions and uh, playing director on this uh, Corona-themed video. We are still kind of quarantined uh, in Charlotte, so that's why I'm doing this. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, here's your first question. What is it like being famous? Are you recognized often? <laughs> um... Oh, that's a weird, tricky question. So, I think my whole life, everybody at some point, I think, wants to be famous. Uh, but the idea of being famous is very different. Like, the definition is different with some people. Like, some people would say that, you know, real reality TV stars aren't famous. Uh, I guess famous to me is like if you get recognized out in public, you know, but you could be YouTube famous, you know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be on a TV show. I mean, some people are famous just from being politicians or whatever, but the success of 90 Day Fiance has been way bigger than I ever expected. Uh, it, it, I knew it was a big show when I signed up, but I didn't quite grasp the scale of it. And I think uh, with Corona, you know, there was already millions of people that were watching the show and then a lot of people were quarantined and those people started watching other shows and venturing out past the normal shows that they watch. So it brought a whole new crowd. And now it's gotten to the point uh, that I, I can't leave my house uh, without being spotted somewhere. Um, I find it to be a little bit, it, it's a two-edged, double-edged sword. So it's really cool that somebody recognizes you and that they're a fan of your work and they tell you, you know, they're happy and they're excited to meet you. They want to take a picture, but at the same time, you know, when you're a reality star, you're not making millions of dollars. I'm working like everybody else, just trying to put food on the table. And I'm often in a hurry, especially being an entrepreneur, self-employed. You know, I constantly am on the go. So if you see me at Home Depot or Walmart or a gas station, I feel bad because I don't have 30 minutes, you know, to stand around and talk about 90 Day Fiance. But I want to be nice and show respect to someone who's taking time to tell me that they like me. Uh, but I'm in a hurry. So I think that being famous would be a lot cooler if uh, if I was very rich and wealthy and didn't have to work like a normal person. But, you know, I often see people that look at me uh, and, and they can kind of tell they recognize me from somewhere, but they can't place it. But normally when they hear me speak is when it's they automatically are like, oh, my God, you're Tim from from 90 Day. My voice, you know, gives me away. And every once in a while, like, I'll kind of, like, fuck with them, and they'll be like, oh, you, you look just like the guy from 90 Day Fiance. I'll be like, oh, I've heard that before, uh, but it's not me. <laughs> but then eventually, like, I'll start smiling, you know, and then finally I'll be like, nah, it's me. Thank you, you know, whatever. But it's it's great that, you know, someone likes your work because at the end of the day, uh, that's the ultimate goal, I think, for anybody signing up to be on TV is you want to entertain people. You want people to either enjoy your story or to like your personality, enjoy your sense of humor. Uh, so it, it's very nice to get recognized. Uh, I just wish that I was able to spend more time. Uh, the next question is from, I believe this is chubby underscore one, two, three. How long did you and Veronica date and how are you such good friends after the breakup? Uh, so Veronica and I started dating in 2008. I was 28. She was 23 when we met at a bar. Uh, believe it or not, I was coming out of like a nine and a half year relationship. It was literally, I was with you, wasn't I? No, no, no the story me. was that Friday night, I went out with Darius and another friend of ours named Yates. We went to a concert. It was, I remember, because it was actually the weekend 
that Travis Barker was in that plane crash in with, Columbia. Uh, DJ AM? Yep, with DJ AM and that horrific plane cl crash in Columbia, South Carolina. The Saturday after that, I think Blink-182 was supposed to be performing in Charlotte. No, I'm sorry, it was Friday night. Blink-182 was supposed to be performing that night, but we went to the concert and it was like Offspring and somebody else. But the next night, I went out with a, a guy friend of mine and bumped into Veronica at a bar and we started dating. We were together for, we, we get confused on the exact time, but it was somewhere around eight years. Uh, and it was difficult, you know, we were engaged for like six of those years. Uh, we had a lot of ups and downs. It was a roller coaster the whole way. I often credit Veronica as the girl that I kind of grew up with, matured with, you know, she was the first girl I went out of the country with bought a house together, you know, we're raising a child together. Um, we were not friends when we split up. We had an ugly breakup and we were fighting over everything, you know, over the littlest, you know, things in the house. And it was almost about to be in court. And, you know, we were, we hated each other, you know, for all intents and purposes. And it was about six, maybe 10 months after we finally settled everything. Uh, I'll never forget, I was in a relationship, she was in a relationship. It was New Year's Eve and both of us had gotten into fights with our active partners. And I called Chloe to wish her a happy New Year's and Veronica, I called her on face chat and Veronica answered the phone. And we were not on speaking terms at that point. Like uh, I just communicated about seeing Chloe through Chloe. And we ended up talking for like an hour or two on the phone and kind of gave each other advice on kind of what was going wrong in our relationships. And it, it just kind of hit us that like, there's nobody on the earth that understands what it's like to date us, date each other, uh, other than us, because we had been with uh, each other for so long. So it, it built over that. And then obviously, I mean, you know, the breakup was tough on Chloe and just like I went to Chloe's birthday right after we broke up and like me and Veronica were arguing the whole time and I ended up like leaving. So, you know, we weren't mature enough at the time to to be the, the, the co-parents that we needed to be for Chloe. So once we were able to get on a more friendly term, it just grew. And, uh, you know, Darius, the man asking the questions, is my longtime best friend. You know, we've been friends since high school. But Veronica is my other best friend in a different way than, than Daris, man. She's kind of like, I always say Veronica's my ride or die girl. You know, we're not dating, but it's, I kind of still feel like we're in a relationship in a sense. Like we just don't sleep together. We don't sleep in the same house, but we still fight. You know, we still raise <laughs> Chloe, uh, still, you know, do a lot of things like couples. I mean, obviously we're coworkers on, uh, on a TV show together. So uh, it's been interesting, but I'm, I'm very grateful for her friendship and I'm very grateful that, you know, we've been able to turn it around and, and, and you know, grab something beautiful because we always clicked. We always had a lot in common, very similar sense of humor. We always kind of got each other. So uh, it's not easy to replicate somebody that fully understands you. Okay. Mm. This has turned into a very long yeah. Which, I mean, I knew, like, we weren't going to get to every question, but... Oh, hell, man, there's still pages of these shit. I don't even know how fucking far down we are. And I know you're probably scared, because I, I had, like, perused the questions, and I saw that a lot of the same question was asked. Yeah. I... What's the most attractive quality you find in a woman? Sense of humor. Like, bar none. That's the most important thing to me. Because I have a very... And, and one of the reasons why me and you have been such good friends is because we have identical sense of humor. Mm -hmm. If you can laugh with somebody, that's the most important thing. Like, if you're with somebody that doesn't find you funny, they're offended every time you make a joke because they don't understand your humor, that can be big problems. So, the people that can laugh together stay together. <laughs> it's the truth. Hey, yeah, you're right. It's one thing that I say about Veronica, like, you know, when Veronica and I were good, it was great. Because we, we, fuck, Veronica's funny as shit. Yeah, like, she is, she is, she's fucking she wild. She is hysterical, you know, and. Because we all laugh at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, shit. like, she's like, for a guy, she's like hanging out with a bro. You know what I mean? Like, and I always liked that about her. Like, you never felt like. Like you, you, like you could, like Veronica's like girl. You could be like, damn, look at that girl's ass. 
and she's your fiance and she'd be like yeah man like that girl does have a great ass like she never was like that super jealous you know girl why, that, yeah, like why you, are you that, looking at her ass? yeah like you couldn't be yourself around you know what i mean and i, I always like that quality about her but and the flip side of that is you know veronica's not very feminine so you know you trade like you know veronica's not the type that if you've had a bad day she's not going to come coddle your ass and you know you know rub your shoulders or you know do do something like that so you you trade for trade but uh i, I like humor that, that's the most important and after that you know honesty honesty is the most important but you know as far as like a, that's just expected mm -hmm. but like loyal honest and funny you know is there's the three things that are great will you ever video chat with fans uh i mean i do cameos like uh i'm not a big phone talker like i'm a text type guy yeah uh, i don't think i'll talk to you on the phone in yeah in I, years and the thing is for me is it's not even that i wouldn't want to do it it's I don't think people believe me when I tell them really how busy I am. Like, I just don't have time for things like that. Like, my brain is fried by the end of the day. Uh, being self-employed and on a t the TV show shit is a full-time job in itself. Um, running a business, you know, I'm, I'm the person that's ordering the shit, designing the shit, making the shit, shipping the shit, selling the shit. Uh, figuring out how to pay for this, pay for that, you know, it, it, it's a lot. Answering the phones, responding to emails, like, if you write Gringo Guns right now, especially during Corona, I had an employee, uh, but they had to leave because of the Corona situation, so right now it's all me, you know, so again, it, it's a lot, it, it's a lot. I mean, I, I, I'm impressed sometimes with myself with how much I'm able to not only mentally deal with at once because I'm always dealing and thinking about 50,000 things at once, but just what I'm able to accomplish. I wish I could clone myself. You know, if I had like two or three of me, then I could get a lot done. <laughs> but. Have you ever visited our beautiful state of Florida? Of course, Veronica was from uh, Coral Gables. So we used to go to Miami a couple times a year and I mean I went to Disney my grandparents used to take me to Disney when I was a kid and I had an uncle in Jacksonville and an aunt in St. Petersburg. Um, Veronica's family has a house in the Florida Keys that we used to vacation at sometimes. I've been to Florida many times. Fact, me and you've gone to Florida together a couple times. Yeah. To buy guns, to go to Universal Studios. Yeah. We, you know, so yeah I've been, I've been to Florida probably more than any other state besides North Carolina. I love Florida. It's just a little hot and it rains a little much and traffic is horrendous in Miami, but I tell you what, the most beautiful girls you ever see in America, fuck LA, they're in Miami. Miami is this beautiful, I mean, handsome men too. I mean, everybody looks like a model there. It, it'll really make you feel shitty about yourself if you don't go to the gym. <laughs> and everybody's rich too, so like, I told you, like, the first time I ever bought myself a nice car, I bought a Lexus. And, um, it was a project car, had some damage, I got a good deal on it. It took me, like, a year to rebuild it, but it was an expensive car at the time. It was a hard-top convertible. The SC? The SC, yeah. And I finished it, and the next day, me and Veronica drove that car to Miami for the very first time I was meeting her family. And I'm, like, thinking I'm the shit, like... You know, that was like a $70,000 car, new or something. Nicest car I ever owned. And it was a few years old then. But uh, you get to Miami and you just see like Bentley, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Bentley, Lamborghini, Ferrari, McLaren. <laughs> and like your fucking Lexus all of a sudden feels like a 1992 Tercel. It, you know, so it's like a big reality check of like Miami is a different world, you know, and it's all about what you have, what, what brands you're wearing. And I like nice shit, but I also am not superficial in the sense that you have to have. Yeah, brands. like I, I, I hate like you'll meet waitresses in Miami that are driving Jaguars like they're they're, they're They live in a shit box, but they have to have a, a, a Louis Vuitton bag and a fucking nice car because it's that that city is all about just keeping up with the Jones and that's that's not 
really me. The only person I compete with is you with fucking TV sizes. <laughs> and this motherfucker just ordered an 85 inch TV. I've had the biggest TV for the last two years. I have a 75 inch and he's got a 70 inch. And now he just one up me and ordered the 85 inch. So I'm like, oh my God, now I'm gonna have to get a 90. <laughs> uh, we, and he just got a new receiver and uh, he's like upgrading his whole system. And that's the only thing, only person I'm competitive with is is Mr. Darius over here. So <laughs> I'll let him be the the TV champion for a while. And then, uh, and then he'll one up me. I'll wait till the, the 100 inch becomes affordable. <laughs> Like spend $20,000 on a TV, but... Either way, he'll be playing on my TV and I'll be playing on yeah, his. Yeah, exactly. All right. I'm going to buy the house first and then buy a nice TV to go in it. Yes, sir. When is your birthday? June 30th. Coming up, what is today? The 20th or... What is right it? now, it is the 21st. It is Father's Day, oh. so happy oh, Father's Day father. to you. Oh, thank you, man. But you're kind of a father, too, with your niece. So happy Father's Day to you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I need to call my dad. Let me see. <laughs> bye bye.